What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. My name is Adam. I am your host. There have been some major changes to PSA, and I am going to talk about that in today's video. So as many of you probably have heard, there were some rumors in the last couple weeks that PSA was going to be raising their prices. I didn't really want to make a video on the rumors because I wanted to kind of wait until they went through. I actually even waited to make this video about PSA because the sale officially went through, which there was some doubt that it was going to. I think I watched a video and someone, uh, the video was saying that it was a 50-50 shot and I, that made me a little bit nervous because I didn't know exactly what was going to happen from that standpoint. But it looks like the the deal was up to like the money that was going to be sent to the people on the people that own the stocks. That money is going up. I think it went from seventy dollars to ninety two dollars or something something along those lines. And so Nat Turner is one of those. Or he's one of the main investors and they also added i think kevin durant to the investment group and i think also deshaun watson was added to this investment group which i'm i'm surprised like i'm really it's really cool to see deshaun watson getting so involved in sports cards like i think we've seen him at like beaker trading with um i don't know if he was breaking boxes but he also did an interesting interview with or not with rally but with the boardroom back in 2019 where he was talking about rally um, which I thought was kind of interesting because that was like two years ago. So, you know, he's he's been in this. Like, this isn't just like some fair weather thing for him. I think he's been in this in this space for a lot longer than maybe we thought he was, I guess. Uh, but so he was added, and the deal officially went through, and Nat Turner and PSA and everybody at Collector's Universe has announced that the prices of uh, getting cards graded is going up. I guess I'm seeing... I'm actually surprised at the that that there isn't as much negative negativity, honestly, with this one. I think that uh, I was expecting a lot of, you know, I don't and I don't know actually what I was. I was expecting people to be pretty negative about this, but I've seen on like Twitter and Instagram people being, you know, very mixed. It's either they really like it or they really don't. I think I'm somebody who, I mean, I've been saying that PSA should be raising their prices for. Uh, like a six months now, like ever since they raised them originally back a couple months ago, I said that they should be raising them again because the nature of getting a card graded, like, you know, I, I put out a video, like I put out a reaction to Gary V's video where he was doing overrated and underrated and he talked about PSA. And I said that, uh, you could take a card and turn it from $5 to a hundred dollars, which wasn't exactly the case. Like I, I put the video out on TikTok and a bunch of people were like, well, what are the examples of grading a card and getting it go from it was it was sort of an exaggeration like it was a quick kind of thing and i should have honestly i think that's i think my place in the hobby is not to exaggerate really like i think you know the content that i've made has been very down to earth so realistically i should have said that you can turn like a 20 to 30 dollar card into a hundred dollar card by getting it getting it graded by psa but so essentially all the prices doubled um, and I, I, from what I'm seeing, economy or the lowest rank is still down, I think. Uh, but all the prices doubled. And I mean, I think some people, I can see how a lot of people that are collectors that just wanted to get cards graded for fun, it's obviously more expensive for them now. And, you know, I think that if I'm Nat Turner, I want to be grading a lot less of like the random base cards from like non rookie years. And I want to be getting more like actual like prism or like bowman chrome or like regular tops rookies and i think this is one way that that's going to happen because like the the average collector and i think this is one thing that i can see how people would be upset about the average collector isn't going to send in a base card uh just a random base card because before like last year or two years ago you could have sent in a bunch of cards for ten dollars a piece and, you know, I think what ends up happening there is someone looks at, like, they had just have some random Mike Trout card. They have some random card, and they say, well, $10, I can, I can wait uh, however long for this to be, to, for this to be graded. Uh, but now they look at it and they say, well, if I, if I do economy, it's going to be, like, $50, or, like, it could even be more depending on what happens with the grade. I think people are pretty upset with that standpoint. I just think that, you know, if we are in the hobby, there are going to be half. There had to have been changes. There has to be changes to how PSA is running their business, so that way, 
I, and first of all, they they have to make money. I'm just I don't I, I the one gripe that I'm seeing a lot of people talk about is that like PSA is only doing this for the money, and I don't necessarily disagree with that. But at the same time, like like I think they look at it as a percentage. And I've talked about this kind of comparison. Like and, and I know I know the numbers aren't exactly going to add up here, but like if they have a million cards and they can grade them for fifty, er, they can grade them for fifteen dollars a piece. Uh, why wouldn't they want to have uh, 500,000 cards and grade them for $30 a piece? Like, you, you can charge more, and that means less cards are sent in, you have to do less work, and you're still making the same amount of revenue. I think that's almost exactly what I, I that's what I think is going to happen, but I don't even necessarily think that it's going to decrease it by half. Like, if I would be surprised, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I know PSA will probably never come out with these types of numbers, but. I wouldn't be surprised if this only drops, like, let's just say, let's use the million as an example. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a million drops to, like, 700000 Like, I don't think it's going to be cut. Like, I don't think doubling the prices is going to cut the supply or the amount of cards that are being sent in in half. Like, I really think it's probably going to be, like, a 25 to 30% drop in how many cards are being sent in because there's still so much margin when you're sending in cards. Like, and here's the other thing. If, you, if this is a money thing for you, like you just need to be more careful with what cards you're deciding to send in. Like if you're sending in um, like a, like 10 Luca PSA 10s and half of them come back as, or you're sending in Prism Luca cards and half of them come back as 10s, like you just have to make sure that like the money that you spent on the card and that the money that you're spending to get the card graded now is worth what a PSA 10 or a PSA 9 is. I also think that this gives more value to PSA 8s, PSA 9s, maybe even PSA 7s because I think less people are going to – I think that this is going to decrease the amount of cards that get sent in ultimately. So I think that what that means is that there's going to be less cards for people to buy that are graded like this, and I don't know if – I don't know if this was a deal that was done with Tops or with Panini because I don't I don't think there really is any benefit for people not getting cards graded for those companies because like I said like I've said in the past like they don't get any extra money from cards being or from from raw cards being sold on the secondary market. So I don't think that there's anything really there, but I just do think that you're going to see a lot more raw cards get graded or raw cards get sold that m people just decide not to get graded. I just think that that's realistically what's going to happen, and I think you, we just have to see the the amount of time has to decrease. Um, and I think I saw someone on Twitter brought up this point that now if you want to get a card graded economy, you could have sent that card in six months ago and got it graded on the 20 or 15 day or 10 day service and basically got it back in the same amount of time. And I just think that if, I, if you're PSA, first of all, yeah, you want to make money. Like that shouldn't be. It's not a surprise. Like, sure, if 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 um if the if the company comes out and say this is for this, you know, it, it really it, it almost doesn't matter what the company says. Like, it shouldn't be surprising that the company wants to make money. Like, and I, I, I don't know why people are so surprised that they're especially now that it's a private company with private investors. If it was a public company, I guess it's sort of the same thing. But no one is buying. Like Nat Turner isn't out here buying PSA for for eight hundred million dollars for him to just be like, yep, it's it's just fun now. It's just a fun thing. Like he he's trying to make money. So like like I said, if he if this doesn't decrease the cards by fifty percent, if he if he double if they're doubling the price essentially, if he's doubling the prices and only thirty percent less are sending in cards, like that is more revenue that's being generated from the other twenty to thirty percent that's on top of the fifty percent. I guess if that if that sort of makes sense. So they're going to try to make money. Like it's just it's just the facts. And I think Nat Turner being in the card community, yes, he's going to try and make money, but I don't I think he's going to try and he's going to make the, at least I think this is what. I think he's going to make decisions that are good for collectors, they're good for investors, they're good for the company. I don't necessarily think that he's out here just trying to make money. Like I don't know, maybe he is. Maybe this is just a money thing for him, and in, in two, three years, he's going to sell the company for $1.5 or something along those lines. But I think that the backlog is going to be hopefully cleared up relatively soon. Like, I don't know if PSA... See, this is the one thing that I like that HGA was doing, was that they were limiting the amount of cards that were getting sent in. Obviously, if you're PSA, there's so many cards that are already out there that at this point, limiting the amount of cards that are getting sent in, I don't think necessarily... I don't think that really affects the what the future value of uh, of a PSA graded card is. Like I think with HGA, 
if they're saying that they're only grading, and I forget if it's, if it's 2,000 cards a month or 2,000 cards a week, if they're only doing that 2,000 cards, that means that there is only really a potential for, it, the potential of growth of a certain card in an HGA slab is going to be much slower than it is in a PSA slab. Because if you look at just for another, another example is like the, there's a Lamella Ball card like that somebody sold, somebody bought for $800 on, on eBay. And I think they tried selling it for 1400. I think they took the listing down, but it said it was population one. And literally within, I made an Instagram post and I made a TikTok about it. Literally within maybe an hour or two hours of putting up that post, there was already another PSA 10 and they were using population one. So it's like, I think it's understandable that people who are sending in cards early want to get the most value. And I think that that is going to, de that's going to be one of the big determinations if I think that this is successful. If I, if there's still backlogs and it still takes six months to get back a 20 day order, then this was not a success. Like this was not a good idea to do. Like, I don't know. I, there only time will tell if this is going to be a move that actually works, but I think they just have to get to a point where the amount of time it takes to get a card graded and get it back is dropped. And if this is one of the ways that it's going to happen, then that's a good thing. But if, if that doesn't happen, then there's going to have to be other changes. And I don't know what those changes are. Like, I don't know what exactly is going to happen, but there has to be some other changes if this doesn't work. Um, and I think if you're, I mean, if you're in the hobby, you've seen people talking about it on Twitter. Like, everybody is very critical of almost every single move that every company makes within the sports card industry. And I guess we'll see if, you know, if people, if people in in a year and a half from now are still waiting nine months to get back a 20 day sub like that's going to be a huge issue especially if they raise these prices but i mean like i said we'll see only time will tell what's going to happen with this move i think it's a good move for now and i think this is one of the ways that it's going to be a solution but like i said we'll see and that's all i've got for today's episode so i want to thank you all for watching or listening on the podcast uh, thank you all. I will uh, see you in the next one. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button as well. Thank you all. I'll see you in the next one.